and the co-host of the Ultimate Guardian Show with Adam the Bull, the one and only Zach Meisel from Progressive Field. What's up, Zach? What's going on, guys? How are you? We're doing well, buddy. You excited about opening day? You don't get that excited. You're kind of like Jason. There's not a ton of emotion. I like game two. It's so much quieter, yeah. more relaxed. <laughs> 3,000 people in the stands. You think it'll be better than that? It's, the weather's supposed to be nice tomorrow. Yeah, it is. It's, I was saying earlier, I, I can't remember a home opener where the weather was this nice. Amazing. And the way it worked out with the eclipse, too, we'll actually be able to see it. Uh, it. It works out perfectly. Zach, before we get to opening day topics, we were just having, because we, we talked about Bieber, and we were talk, I brought up some veterans maybe they could sign, like a Zach Renke or Johnny Cueto or something. Obviously, Trevor Bauer is going to always come up. I, 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 in my opinion, there's 0% chance the Guardians would sign him. Would you agree with zero, or do you think there's any remote possibility the Guardians would consider him? No, I think it's lower than that, honestly. <laughs> um, look, th there's no one has signed him yet, and let's not pretend like the Guardians are the only team that needs starting pitching. That's true. So that tells you all you need to know. Then you throw in the fact that this organization had headaches with him for seven years before all the allegations and everything came out. Um, I know people are going to say, well, he's, he was never charged with anything and he, you know, people can change or grow, whatever you want to say. An arbitrator still upheld his record length suspension. And this is an organization where he butted heads with people on the field and in the clubhouse before any of that. And it's an organization that has had, you know, there's the Mickey Calloway stuff and yeah. there's, they, they changed the name because they of the unrest with society or whatever they wanted to say a few years ago. So I just, it's hard for me to believe that a team that has had that sort of outward messaging in recent years is going to go and sign a guy linked to anything like this. Zach, could you see a scenario where they saw, would sign a Grenke or a Matthew Boyd or a Johnny Cueto or a Noah Syndergaard, any of those guys, or, or not really? Maybe if there's another injury, but I just yeah. think, you're getting Curry back and Ben Lively. They gave a major league contract to. So right. there are options, even if they're not sexy options. I just, you know, if someone is 37 years old and sitting on their couch right now, uh, that's probably for a reason. That's fair. Hey, Zach, talk about what you expect from uh, Tristan McKenzie in this second start. We all know his first start was rocky. And then I'm looking at my phone. As of now, it looks like the Chicago White Sox have not named their starter. Any news on who that person might be? I, I haven't seen I, the scoreboard was just showing Garrett Crochet. I don't know where the White Sox are in their um, their turn in the rotation, so I don't I don't know if that's accurate or not. I never trust the scoreboard here. I've seen some weird stuff that they've messed with <laughs> pregame on the lineups. Um, McKenzie's the most important player on the team. I, I think I believe that before the season. I think it's tenfold now with Bieber's injury. You need you need starters who Steven Vogt can go to the ballpark and breathe easy, knowing that person's on the mound. And we saw McKenzie was that in 2022, um, but obviously he made four starts last season, and he and Bieber were kind of going through similar things with their elbows. You see what happened to Bieber, and if I'm Tristan McKenzie, I'm thinking, uh-oh, am I next? Like yeah. this, this, the, the to Tommy John is the grim reaper in baseball right now, and McKenzie opted not to have surgery last season. He opted to, to rehab it, rest it, and his velo was down considerably in his first start. So I don't know if that, I mean, he said he feels healthy. His velo was a little better in spring training, especially at the end. I saw him hitting 92, 93 a little bit. So I don't know if it was just trying to pace himself or he got too many jitters in his first start. I don't know. Um, but he needs to be a stable force in this rotation for this rotation to keep standing like they, they, Gavin Williams has an elbow thing he's coming back from you've got guys coming back being built up after spring training so they just need <clears throat> you can't burn out the bullpen in April and you know Bieber's injury given the way he was looking the first two starts it makes McKenzie just absolutely crucial to their success you know Zach I was looking around um, the uh, MLB and it's just not just the you know the Guardians like you know, Tommy John surgery is, you know, up every year, it seems like. There's, there's more and more of these 
Um, in, in Major League Baseball, do you are they thinking about it in terms of it just happens, or is there any correlation to you know guys just you know wanting that velocity, working on it consistently? You know, there's teams that you know you have guys who you know throw in the mid 90s, 92, 93. Now they're at 96. You're like, how the heck does that happen? Um, you know, is is that's something Major League Baseball is worried about because it just seems to be a really big thing, especially with people who choose not to have the surgery first and to kind of rehab it. Yeah, gee, I mean, they're they're terrified. It's I don't want to say it's an epidemic and make it out to be some dramatic thing, but it's you have people across the league who are terrified because there is no exact formula here. And it's not just Bieber. I mean, Bieber was the big news for about an hour, and then the Braves announced that Spencer Strider, who's a top three pitcher in the sport, is headed for likely the same fate. So it's a combination of things for sure, and I think the fact that no one has a clear answer on it is what makes this tricky because every team wants guys. The easiest way to get outs is strikeouts, right? If you can just miss bats, that takes care of everything. If you're trying to throw 88-mile-an-hour sinkers, like they did in the olden days, and you're le leaning on your defense and having guys put it in play, that's great. But there's no more, you can't shift the way you used to shift. So that makes those pitchers, it, life's tougher on them. So you think about everyone, pitchers train year round, they go to these facilities, they learn to throw harder, they learn to give max effort on every pitch. You're seeing 98 mile an hour fastballs and 91 mile an hour sliders. You never saw that stuff 20 years ago. The problem is, Doing that is hard enough, and you get the wear and tear on your elbow. You don't rest as much as you used to in the winter. Then you add in the pitch clock, and I, I don't know how much of an effect that's had, but at least you used to be able to throw a pitch 98 miles an hour and then catch your breath for 30 seconds, and now you can't. You're right back on the mound, and 18 seconds later, you have to fire another 98-mile-an-hour fastball. So it's, I think the way pitching has just gone and developed has made pitchers better but it's, it's made it more dangerous I think and I don't know what the solution is and I think you have 30 teams that are really scared that their best pitcher is going to be next because it's nobody's safe. Zach we'll wrap it up with two questions here on a scale of one to ten how much are you buying the Guardians offense being real and what player are you most pleasantly surprised by hitter or pitcher through the first nine games. All right, let me go backwards. I, I'm going to take a – I think there's too many obvious answers for your second question, so let me go Hunter Gaddis, who That's we came one. up – I think everyone remembers him as a guy who made a spot start against the Astros and just got completely shelled a couple of years ago and yep. wanted to never see him again, and now he looks like a reliever you want to call upon to get that key strikeout. So credit to him for evolving and finding out what he does well. Uh, and that bullpen looks really good, and it needs to be really good, given the state of the rotation. The offense, I, I, I'm buying it in terms of, I was wondering how they'd stay afloat until reinforcements came. You know, Kyle Manzardo, Chase DeLauder, even someone like Juan Brito or Angel Martinez. So I like what I've seen so far, just that if you add someone like Manzardo, who's got some pop, or DeLauder, who has some pop this summer, like that lineup seems so much better than it was last year. But... I want to see more before I'm really buying into this nine or this 13. You know, can Will Brennan keep this up? Mike's guy. Can uh, can right. Brian Ropio keep this up? Tyler Freeman. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm half in. Give okay. me like a, a five. But I'm feeling better about where it could be in a couple months. I think it's fair. I'm right there with you. Zach, great stuff. Enjoy opening day. And the next episode of the Ultimate Cleveland Guardians show live tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We will have it for you right here on the Ultimate Cle Cleveland Sports Universe. Thanks, Zach. All right, awesome. don't stare at the sun, guys. Yeah. Good advice. <laughs> yeah.